by the Word with Pastor Leroy Joseph. Let's tune in to receive the message from God. the Lord again and it is a pleasure to be back with you on this broadcast. We are so privileged that God has given us this opportunity to be able to share the word of God with so many of you, so many different parts of the world. We want to thank Dr. Joseph for giving us this opportunity. What a tremendous privilege and an honor. But you know, we love God, we love you too. And we really want to help you. But there's something though, we want to hear from you. All right, we want to hear from you. You, you have our information, send us an email. All right, go to our website. Let us know what God is doing in your life, for you there in Africa, those wonderful friends in Tanzania, now in Kenya. We know that there are people all over the Caribbean, here in the United States, you're receiving it. In South Africa, think about our friends in Taiwan. And there are many, many people, we understand that there are people out there in Egypt, in Qatar, Wherever you're listening, we want to hear from you. We want to know that the word of God is reaching you. God is touching you. Things are happening in your life. Those of you that we've prayed for, why don't you give us a testimony? Because we believe that we are led by the Spirit when we point out certain, certain situations. You know, we're not just doing this for doing its sake, but we feel led by the Spirit. We don't do it all the time, but we feel the impact. Even now, I, I, I am sensing there is somebody who is struggling. You know, you 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 about to give up. You you are frustrated, and it looks like nothing is working for you. You've tried everything. You said, "I've even tried. I've called upon God. I, I've fasted, and nothing is happening." You need deliverance. You need deliverance, and we're here to pray for you that God would deliver you. But remember, we said, make sure that there is no iniquity in your life. Make sure that there is no sin. And so as we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray God will just deliver you. He would outstretch his hands and bring deliverance into your life that God's hands, mighty hands, would work on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, again, thank you for listening. Thank you for viewing. Remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to be glad because God is on our side. And remember this. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so today I am so honored and privileged to have my wife with me. So she comes to greet you before we go into the teaching for today. Praise the Lord. Again, it's always a joy. It's always excited to, a great excitement to come before you to impart knowledge of God's word. And we pray that when you hear the word of God, you will apply it to your life and bring changes where it is necessary. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. And so we are dealing with keys to answered prayer because we know and we realize that there are so many people who have given up, who are frustrated, and because they're praying, but it looks like nothing is happening. And it's almost like, what's the use? And, and I've been through 
that experience, that thing in my life. You know, get on the knees and pray, and it's like, what am I praying about? I'm praying, but nothing is happening. But you know what I found out? That God's will, God's desire to answer your prayers. God's desire to answer your prayers. And God has the ability to answer your prayer. But remember, there's a lot of things that's dependent upon you. So let's read our foundational scripture for this teaching on prayer. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he had ceased, that one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So Jesus said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So we notice prayer involves relationship with God. Prayer involves his kingdom. Being focused on his kingdom, being established. Prayer involves forgiveness, willingness to receive forgiveness, to give forgiveness. Prayer has to do with requests, asking God, give us this day our daily bread. And so, as we mentioned, so many people are struggling, frustrated, because their prayers are not being answered. But as we mentioned, it is God's will for your prayers to be answered. Jesus said that everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, find. Everyone who knocks, to him the door will be open. Listen to me. God is not a man that he should lie. There, and I put it that way. There is no reason for God to lie. There is no reason. Because if God says, call upon me and I will answer you. Jesus said, if you ask anything, I will do it. Because God has no reason. Because God has the ability to do anything. Anything that you can ask. God, your heavenly father. Let me put it this way. Your father has the ability to do it. You see, God makes promises and he will keep them. Because God knows what is happening tomorrow. It's not like men, you know, we say, we make promises, we'll come tomorrow, but the weather, the circumstance, something went wrong with the car or whatever. Not with God. There is no reason for God to lie, my brothers and sisters. So if your prayers are not being answered, don't blame God. Let's look within us. Let's look within ourselves. David says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. It has to do with me. And that's why David prayed that he would be forgiven of his sin. So last, yes, last time we said that the key number one to having your prayers answered is to make sure you are right, that you have a right relationship with God, that you've dealt with the sin problem. And um, today, before we go, Patricia, got anything to say? All right. So let's move on to the next point, the next key. Right relationship, making sure that right relationship existing between husband and wife. Oh, that is so important. And many times people ignore that. And God has determined the kind of relationship, how a relationship between a husband and wife should exist. Here's what the scripture said. In 1 Peter 
chapter 1, verses 3, chapter 3, rather, verse 7. Husbands, husbands, love your wives, or rather, dwell with them, this is your wife, with knowledge. Dwell with them with knowledge. How many of us men, we are so ignorant, all right, about the woman that we marry? Because we, 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 we view, a lot of us, we view women from the perspective of a man. And, and, and because of that, we create so many problems. And Peter said, dwell with them according to knowledge. And the thing about it is like so many of us, we get into marriage without the proper knowledge. So we don't know exactly what to do. And here is the thing. Knowledge is acquired. You have to seek knowledge. You know, there are three things, principles in life to succeed. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Knowledge is information. Understanding is no how to deal with the information. And wisdom is know what to do. Do you have wisdom when it comes to the relationship between you and your wife? And so Peter is saying, you husband, you have a responsibility to live with them according to knowledge. He said, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And this is where so many men, husbands, stumble because when they see weaker, they totally misunderstand what Peter is saying. Notice what he says, give honor, all right? Give honor, and to give honor means to esteem highly. Giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker. And that word weaker is a very poor translation of the word, the Greek word. And it really means fairer, all right? Fairer, more delicate. All right, doesn't mean that she's mentally weaker than men. That's not what God is saying. And maybe you're living in a, 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 in a society, in a nation, where it has been taught that women are lesser than men and they are to be subjugated. And that, that you know, that's not what the Bible teaches. All right, weaker here is fair and more delicate. I always tell people it's like, you know, it, it, it's like when you have clothes, garments that you're going to take to the laundry, all right? You separate them, all right? And so the, the woman is coming like the silk, the delicate um, material has to be handled, you know, with, with, with care. And the Bible says give honor, esteem highly. There is a reason for it. And we're talking about keys to answer prayer. And what he's saying is that giving honor to her as unto the weaker, the more delicate, the fairer vessel. And as being heirs together, hallelujah, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. So hear me, husband. Hear me, husband. Hear me, preacher man. Hear me, pastor. Hear me, evangelist. Hear me, prophet. Do you honor your wife? Are you giving honor to your wife? The Bible says if you do not do this, then your prayers will be hindered. So this could be the reason, my brother, why your prayers are not being answered because you are not giving honor to your wife. And here's what he says. You are heirs together of the grace, the grace that you go to the throne of grace. The grace that will not come to you. You know, I always tell people it is like this. It's having a joint account. And in that joint account, both signatures have to be on the check in order to be cashed. So you cannot cash the check and receive God's grace because you are heirs together. You have a joint account with God. And so if you're not honoring your wife, it says your prayers will be hindered. It's very, very important 
to have a proper relationship as husband and wife. And if God is saying that the woman is a weaker vessel, yes, and also the husband supposed to know her, find out things about her. So if she is telling you all about her, what you have to do is listen to her in order for you to have a good relationship with her and she with you. So you're supposed to listen. Listen. When you listen and you hear, then you try to satisfy her with the things that she's saying. If the Bible says to honor her, these are the ways that you honor her. If the Bible says to take heed to what she's saying as a weaker vessel, then you need to do just that. Be obedient to God. I think the reason why we don't get our prayers answered because we are walking in disobedience. We are not obeying what the Lord says. We just want to do our own thing. Doing our own thing would not make us better and would not make our prayers be heard when we do our own thing. Cain wanted to do his own thing, and look what happened. You know what happened. And so when you want to do your own thing, there is not a blessing. The blessing will not flow, and you always have problems in your relationship because you want to do your own thing. And in doing your own thing, you make your mate unhappy. So in order for your prayers to be answered, start being obedient, walk in obedient, and do what the Lord says. And in doing so, you find the relationship will be better. You know, and it is important that you understand this. Peter addressed the man. The earnest is upon the man, the husband, the responsibility. You know, a lot of men like to say, I am the head. I am the head. You know, I, I understand this. When you talk about headship in a marriage, you're really talking about leadership, not dictatorship. You're talking about leadership. Ephesians says this. Christ is the head of the man. Uh, uh, Corinthians. Christ is the head of the man, and God is the head of Christ. So the husband... All right, he is under subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, and so, yes, he's the head of the wife, but he's also on Christ is his head. And so God has given, all right, a, 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 the way that a husband should live with his wife. He said it in the word. The word, remember, we live by the word. And the word is said how you should Treat your wife. And the Bible says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. As Christ loved the church. All right? And he gave himself for the church. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle. So the responsibility, the earnest here, Peter is putting it, not me, is the word of God. I know the wife has a, her responsibility to be subject to the husband. But let me ask you a question. Husband, is your wife resisting your leadership? It could be a reason why. You know, the Bible says, you know, uh, you, you know uh, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Submit to God. Let me ask you a question. In your relationship with your wife, who does, what does she see? Does she see God? Does she see Christ? Or does she see the devil? So if there is resistance, all right, from the wife, could it very well be? that what is being portrayed, 
all right, what is being portrayed. And so the honest, again, I say, is upon you, you know, to live with it, get knowledge, get to know what it is that she wants, what it is that she needs. You know, it, it, it's so many of us, and I know that it's not a marriage conference, but I need to say that it is so important. You know, we, we want to give our wife what we like, okay, and not giving her what she needs. So, for example, all right, you don't give, if you like orange juice, how many of you put orange juice in your car? No. Because you like orange juice, you don't give your car orange juice. You give the car what it needs. It needs fuel. And so even though the price of fuel is high, you don't say orange juice is cheaper. I like orange juice. No. You give the car what it needs to take you to where you need to go. So you need to give your wife what she needs. Find out what she needs to honor her. To honor means to esteem. And God says, when you do this, you dwell with her according to knowledge. You live according to God's principle. You love your wife. The wife submit to you. Together, you are together. As the S together. S together to the grace of life. The inheritance that you have. it got to be double signature. You can't access it by yourself. You need your wife, and you need to treat her, Peter says, with knowledge and with honor. Love your wife. It will be very good for you, husbands, or those who are dating, to show that love to that person. When you do that, love begat love. So show love. And if you have the love of God abiding in your heart. God is love. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So if you have a mate, or you have a girlfriend, whatever you have, and at first you said you love, and now you don't love, or you are not showing love, then I guess you don't really love God. Because how can you love God who you have not seen, and you have your mate, who you are seeing and don't love. So that's not really true love. True love comes from God. So love begat love. If you love your mate, you treat her with that love and respect and honor, it will come right back to you. So. Search your heart and see what you are doing. And if you are not happy in your marriage, if you're not happy in your relationship, <clears throat> check it out and see what's going on. Remember, God is love. And he that loveth God knows God. And because of your love for God, you'll be able to share it. You cannot separate it. You have to. Have that genuine love for your mate. Check it out. So, again, it's the scripture. Sir, if you're having struggles, your prayers is not, are not being answered. Check what the Bible says. Giving honor to your wife. Because you are heirs together of the grace of life. You want God to intervene. You want God to answer your prayers. So just do what is right. If you have to ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. If you have to acknowledge, hey, I just didn't know. That's the best way to begin to know, to acknowledge that you didn't know. And then walk in the knowledge. Walk in love. Obey God, and you will see changes in your life. Your prayers will be answered. Why don't you pray, Patsy, for maybe um, husbands and wife relationship? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we say thank you for this opportunity that we can come and bow before you. Thank you, Lord, because we know that many are hearing your word 
We pray again that whatever they might be going through at this time, husbands loving their wives, wives loving their husbands, mates, whatever is going through, whatever they are going through at this time. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will intervene on their behalf. They will be calling upon you at this time in the name of Jesus, that you would cleanse them from all sin, cleanse them from all unselfishness, and selfishness, cleanse them, cleanse them, cleanse them in the name of Jesus, that they would be very, very unselfish in, in everything that they so desire to please one another in the name of Jesus. We plead your blood upon their hearts and lives, Lord. Come into their hearts and cleanse them afresh. Take full control, Lord, and let their relationship be better starting from today in the name of Jesus. Forgive them as they forgive each other in the name of Jesus. We thank you again because we know you will hear and you would answer our prayer. And for those who are genuinely calling upon you, we pray again that they will receive deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity and we just praise you that you are our Father and you desire to answer our prayers for Everyone who asks, receive. And we are asking you, our Father, for you to reach out your hand in our behalf. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember, we love you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God bless you. Until next time. Thank you for watching our program today. We trust you were encouraged. To connect with us, our website is www.pastorwlj.com. Until next time, be blessed.